Hello and welcome to part two of the Frank Fazetta art tips from uh, Frank Fazetta part two. So uh, I've done a head study of one of uh, Frank's Conan piece of a uh, the called the two snow giants, which is a epic piece. And uh, let's see what we can learn from uh, Frank today and uh, pick his brain and become a little bit better at art. All right. So um, this is the scene. Uh, I pulled out my book because uh, the images on the internet is uh, not pretty good. And I got this book, Icon, which is great one of the best investments I ever had and then I did a gouache painting of it it's pretty good right I felt pretty good at the moment like okay the study is done I just need to uh, look at it on Photoshop to uh, fine-tune it right and it, I won't have too much mistakes I thought it's okay right but immediately of course was humble right uh, by putting myself next to the the master, the master, right? It's my my stuff is like <sighs> all right. So uh, immediately I've uh, painted over it, and uh, I've learned a few things, and I would uh, like to share it with you today. Uh, what have I learned, and hopefully you can learn from them, and become a better artists all right so uh, first thing I've noticed is uh, there's so much color in Frank's shadows right but uh, at first I didn't notice it but why I found out that uh, it's because his shadow shapes are uh, designed so well and grouped so well right your brain just uh, automatically group them into shadows when you're looking at his pieces right and uh, yeah it's just a great design element on it and uh, being known as a two value artist right because uh, people always say ah Frank only paint with uh, high contrast and two values right is uh, isn't that much the case because there's so much uh, yeah so much rich colors in the shadows I really I really uh, I'm really amazed right uh, uh, the richness of uh, colors in his uh, actual piece and uh, the second thing because uh, he's really saving up that uh, pure black that dark stock in uh, the places which is really required to make that uh, maximum push on his uh, images all right first point is uh, big color range colorful shadows right and uh, the other thing is uh, He's really using that uh, white, white, right? There's a lot of white in this image. When I was doing the study, I didn't think it was white for somehow, or at least it's that bright, because uh, using that much white is a no-no, right, on painting, but it's not the case here. He's using that uh, maximum black and the whitest white for that, uh, for that punch, for that highest contrast rate it just makes the image that uh, so much richer right so much stronger higher contrast right so point two uh, don't be hesitate don't be afraid in my case it's a little bit of a uh, scared to use that white white right so uh, don't be afraid it's just a crappy crappy joy right you could uh, do a better job next time so uh, this is what I've done on the over painting, right? Fixed up some of the shapes. Can't resist to put some of that blue, that purple, that juicy purple blue from the background, right? Because uh, this orange and uh, bluish purple pair is just so strong. Great design choice, right? And yeah, I just uh, fixed up my shapes, I put uh, more color in my shadows, just as he did. And uh, yeah, putting putting that white white and that darker dark into it, and instantly it just looks so much better, so much color, 
right? Looks so much richer with that full contrast. And also, I uh, point three that I would like to point out today is the shapes of his design. It's just so intelligent and grouped so well, right? Because it's a beard, put it into the beard shapes, group it. And also the shapes are so much pronounced, so much clear. And look at my shitty shapes here, right? It doesn't look like anything. And the, the, the shape is less pronounced, uh, meaning it's not a smooth. There's a little bit uh, wishy-washy, uh, didgeridoo stuff happening inside. So uh, his shapes are just much cleaner, well organized, right? So. The first thing I would like to talk about is uh, well-pronounced shape design and grouping your shapes, right, uh, into uh, categories that that just uh, enriches the viewing enjoyment of people. So that's the first thing. So a quick recap: What did I learn today? Uh, again, before, after, just a few minutes. Put them back into the colors, right. So much different. Fixing the shapes. It's just I I just did those those three things in a few minutes. Like this is the difference, right? Number one, what was it? Number one? Tell me. Yes, yes, you're right. Number one is uh, colors in the shadow shapes, right? More colors. Uh, don't use dark too much. Don't abuse it. Number two. Don't be hesitant to use that full color range, that uh, whitest white and darkest dark. Use the uh, yeah, use the whole value bar. And number three is uh, better shapes. This comes from uh, great decision making, decision making, and um, and uh, yeah, experience. So I don't think I can learn it in a short period, but. For now, at least I could do what I could do is better pronounce shape, right? The next time I'm drawing shapes or painting shapes, trying to pronounce them more clearly, without uh, without less with less stuff in between, and making it a weird shape, right? So much as six acts and stuff, just uh, just like my talking, right? It should be straight to the point, without so much stuff in between, right? It just communicates so much better. I, I think I made the point. Yeah, that's it. So uh, I hope you have learned something from this uh, free tips uh, from uh, Frank Facetta, part two. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have learned something. And uh, yeah, thank you again. And uh, the best of luck on your efforts. And have a nice day. And... Thank you, and uh, look at my website, visit it, and uh, see you next time.